if there had only been one armed student or teacher at Virginia Tech, for example, they would have been able to very quickly stop the event. We see this time and again, and a great example of it, although it's not a school, um, but a great example of a mass shooter who was foiled in his purposes is the Colorado church shooter who showed up at the church. He killed, he had already killed two youth uh, ministers, I believe, in a facility a few miles away, went to the church, came in, had a backpack with over 500 rounds. He was intent on taking out as many people as he could. The paid security guard at that church fled, as I recall, and a woman parishioner who was carrying, she stepped forward, engaged him, wounded him, and when he realized that he was not going to be able to carry out his attack, he took his own life. And that's a pattern we see repeated time and time again. These bad actors are determined to end their life and in doing so take as many people with them as they can. And inevitably, when they get any sign of resistance, whether it's from law enforcement or a lawfully armed victim, they choose to go ahead and take their own life. And I have no reason to doubt that the same pattern would have occurred in Virginia Tech. If he had started getting resistance, he would have went ahead and taken his own life. That is my belief. I, I can't state it categorically. But that time and time again we see it. Um, the case of uh, the Pearl, Mississippi shooter uh, didn't quite make the headlines the way that Virginia Tech did. And why? Because in Pearl, Mississippi, the principal went to his vehicle, retrieved his lawfully carried firearm, and held the shooter at gunpoint until police arrived. And how many students, how many dozens of families owe their lives to that lawfully owned firearm? We can't know. But those people owe him a great debt that he'll never collect, and they don't even know, perhaps, that they owe him. 